Hi guys, this is Claudia here from Metal Days 2016 for We Don't Care and this is Misery Index. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having us. Hello, who's <laughs> Scott? <laughs> cool. Oh, do you know German? Yeah, yeah. the beat. <laughs> cool. That's what you say in, in Österreich, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alles klar. <laughs> Great. So uh, you had a long ride here, uh, but you saw some of the country I heard before the interview. Of yeah, it was about nine hours long. Uh, mm -hmm. I slept for most of it, but our, yeah, our driver carries the brunt of that burden. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but yeah, it was it was pretty long. Beautiful scenery though. Mm -hmm. Really nice countryside. And uh, do you get to stay here after? Uh, today or you have think, to move on? I think then? so. I, don't, I, I mean, I think it's a somewhat of a long drive, but I don't think we're in a big hurry. We have or a anything. hotel. Oh, yeah, we yeah. have a hotel. Mm -hmm. so. Because, you know, there's a, a nice beach here at the site, and oh, probably yeah? you can enjoy we're yourself in a bit. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, so I heard that with uh, Hate May Return. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a, it's a long, long ride, actually. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah. it takes some time. <laughs> But um, we, we know the band Hate may return in Vienna and you're going to play in the Viper Room, I heard. So yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hope you will have fun there, too. Yeah, it should be <laughs> fun. We played there before. It's a good spot. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're touring such a lot, you get to meet a lot of people, of course. But is it all the same guys all the time or you get to meet some new people as well? You run into a lot of the same faces. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like in the bands and, and what mm -hmm. have you. I mean, it seems like it's really huge, but it's really like a pretty small circuit of people mm -hmm. um, that kind of keeps like revolving around these <laughs> uh, seemingly big events. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, we meet people on the road, but uh, you yeah, know. and there's newer fans every year. Yeah. Some people just start to find out about us. So for us, for them, our last album is is how they got into us. So some of the older fans they start to disappear, maybe, and the newer fans arrive, and it's a mixture of all. Uh, talking about the mixtures, um, concerning your style and your sound, is it like, it seems like a travel for you through the sound, or you think it's it's something that you keep the same? Mm, well, in, in, there's, in certain, the there's certain traditions that we like to keep alive in the music, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we also don't like to stagnate either. Um, you know, when Jason started the band, you know, back in 2002. It was more of like a grindcore band, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> certainly like the the follow following like probably two records is more like in that vein, but um, we've slowly sort of progressed out of doing straight grindcore because uh, it just seems like there's a very limited amount of stuff you can do with that, and there's mm -hmm. like other musical things that we like and what we, what we wanted to do. So um, that's kind of that's kind of what we did. But you can still hear like uh, you know the elements of old school thrash and. And grindcore, and you know that's all still in there, um, but it's mixed in with the with other like more melodic, atmospheric elements and that kind of stuff. And uh, with the melodic part, uh, the vocals are also involved a bit <laughs> in uh, your compositions. Is that something that you can like have experiments, or, or you say no, nah, you you want to do something that other people did before? It, ta uh, it takes a really, really long time to get the vocals right uh, because it, it has to be act as another instrument in the, you know, in the mix. So the rhythm and syllabic patterns and what words you choose, and then mm -hmm. are you able to say what you want to say and still have like the syllabic pattern you're looking for mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> it, I'd say like each song probably takes about a hundred hours of of contemplating the lyrics and the and the vocal patterns and things like that. Um, but as far as like experimentation, you know, you're not going to hear us like get up there yodeling or some shit, you know. Like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, we're going to, you know, we like keep our own, you know, our own take on like, uh, you know, screaming yeah, vocals. I don't think we'll be singing anytime soon either. Yeah, listen to me. I can't. There's no way. <laughs> So um, with the sound, uh, quite often there's musicians, you know, that keep their gear and say this is important to have and that and the effects and the amps and the guitars and whatnot. And what is your feeling towards that? Uh, we definitely have our favorite stuff that we like to use. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to get your sound, you got to use that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that said, we are pretty adaptable. We can play on a lot of different types of gear. But, uh, you know, I, for me, I prefer, uh, like, EVH amplifiers mm -hmm. and ESP guitars. We all play ESPs. Yeah. And uh, Ernie Ball strings, the Cobalt ones, because they have, like, a really nice sound to them. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, like, it has a greater magnetic property or wow. something. That particular <laughs> metal, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that said, you know, I could pick up any sort of axe. I think mm -hmm. he could do and. You know, we can make make happen what we need to make happen, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be ideal and it wouldn't you know sound. Yeah, but if 100%. you get, get that, then it's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we put a lot of uh, thought into the gear that we choose to use. You know, uh, our all our rigs are fairly simple. You know, a couple mm -hmm. pedals and a and an amp and some speakers, but it's like very particular on what those things are. So. Um, is there any like recommendations for bands just starting out what to do or not to do or whom to listen to or something like that? <laughs> um, it's the best thing you can do is 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 write good songs. You know that's the that's really the, where it all begins. Don't try to copy your your influences too much and, and sort of try and develop your own whatever comes out of your own sort of. Yeah, you need writing heart. Yeah, you need your own voice for sure. There's way too many copycat bands out there. Way too many bands that are just trying to do a sound, mm -hmm. like do a popular sound like Stoner, Doom, Tech Death, whatever, mm -hmm. and pretty much it just sounds like seven other albums that came before it. It's just a you could call it perfecting or whatever, or it ends up being just being like a carbon copy. So, um, and you know. Those kinds of bands can get popular too, but you know, you know, take some pride in what you're doing here. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, artistry. You know, there's only one Picasso. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're reinventing the wheel in any way either. But we're, I think we have our own sound. I think we sound like Misery Index, and we don't really sound like anyone else. So maybe. Yeah, we got our own voice and subject matters that we like to to deal with. So. It, it kind of makes me happy that you mentioned the word art history, because I keep asking, what is art? What, what is an artist? What makes an artist? Are you artists? Sure, you know, I, pro artistry is probably just striving for that individual voice. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. certainly you're probably a collection of all your influences, it's, you know, deep down. But, um, you know, just trying to push it further to, to a point where it just it isn't a just a carbon copy of what's come before you know that's that's just a study you know when people do like you know they make they make things and like visual art would be like a study you try to like make the still life over here mm -hmm. you know and those those albums that you hear that's pretty much like wow that sounds exactly like this other album you know just different songs and that's that's kind of more of a study mm -hmm. um, and you want to kind of push it do your best to push it beyond that and um, make some memorable stuff after the technical part then yeah there's no, I'm not taking anything away from you know some dudes that can totally just you know shred their their instrument and, mm -hmm. uh, but you know at the end of the day you got to put those tools to work <laughs> you know and not just uh, hey look I can sweep a bunch like great <laughs> yeah what to what Clean effect the floor. Yeah, to what effect you know yeah we're more we're definitely more into like the good songs and songwriting than uh, you know trying to wow you with some sort of solo or technical ability even though we you know we, we do some of that stuff yeah, you know what you do yeah we know we know, <laughs> you that, know your stuff. You know, I feel like we have a, a pretty good grasp on how to use those kinds of things without <laughs> being too overbearing with it yeah. and um, everyone grew up in some scene in the, you know the musical part like in your childhood or when you grew up um, was there a lot of influence from that time that is now found in your music, like venues you went to and shows you saw when you were kind of, you know, adolescent? Yeah, for me, that's where it all begins. I mean, the, you know, when I was very young, the 1980s heavy metal stuff and the speed metal, the thrash metal, that sort of gave me a sense of like how to write a song, like what a song, what a metal sort of songwriting template is, like, you know, that revolves around a good riff, you know, a hook in a song, and it sort of drives it, and and that's sort of where a lot of metal begins for me. And even as death metal kind of came out of all that, I think that tradition still in death metal and extreme metal, 
it came from metal. It still has those sort of like you know forms to work with. And and when I'm writing songs today, that's that's sort of the way I approach it, the way I think about it. I'd, I'd rather not have a song which is just a collection of like 25 different riffs, you know, where that are constantly changing and jumping tempos. And I'm sort of more traditionalist in that way. I like choruses, I like verses, and some interesting way to work in that framework. It doesn't have to be that every time, but that's at least my how I like to approach it. So, so you had a favorite like metal bar that you went to or something? Um, well, no, we didn't really have metal bars. Metal isn't. Um, no, it was usually just for friends. You know, you hang out with friends who are like-minded and friends, and you kind of share the music with each other. And yeah, it was more home parties, I guess. Very much. <laughs> uh, and what about you? Yeah, well, I guess the same for me. I mean, when I was like, <clears throat> I don't know, 13, 14 years old, uh, I had a friend, we had an older brother, you know, listened to Megadeth and shit like that. Yeah. And, you know, he sort of like handed all this stuff down to us and we, that sent us exploring. And he was a drummer, my friend was, and uh, we just started like playing together. His name's Andy, Andy Husky. And uh, so we started a band called Hostile Aggression. <laughs> We just started. We started playing together, just you know, trying to mimic what we what we heard, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, not totally same f sort of philosophy. We can't sound exactly like that band. You had your own thing, and so we started writing uh, right out of the gate. We started trying to write our own thing, and uh, just same as Jason here. We just we would throw these parties, and you know, the mm -hmm. band would play, cool. and man, we did that like all the way through high school, and uh, maybe a little bit like afterwards, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. These huge parties, like three, four hundred people, and uh, <laughs> you know everybody's in, everybody was into you know some kind of form of metal or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's sort of like how I came up. There wasn't any bars or anything like that uh -huh. involved. It was you just did like it to party yourself. yeah, getting getting together with your friends and like learning about different records. You know, we had this record store called the Missing Link mm -hmm. in St. Louis, which isn't there anymore. And that's and this guy named uh, Frank. Who, uh, incidentally, you know, carried the, some of the first dying fetus records too, <laughs> and uh, when he was in fetus, and uh, yeah, we used to go there, and uh, you know, Frank would uh, yeah, wear this like little, he's so, such a weirdo. He like wear this like little um, top hat, like okay. uh, like a party hat. Uh -huh. He would always wear this thing, <laughs> and uh, go in there and like turn us on to different things, and uh, so you yeah. have to listen that's to that. that's how I found out about uh, like bands like Edge of Sanity. And, um, you know, some lesser known bands like Depressy and Autumn Leaves and stuff like that because of Frank, Missing Link. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, all, all my friends, we used to take, you know, take the road trip out there and go look through records and listen, uh -huh. you know. So, yeah, that's where we came up. So, thank you very much for these impressions and the answers. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.